I think I'd, I'd like to can this better. I love it.
put a little peanut butter on there, dip it in the bird seed. They not only have the seed, they get the peanuts, and the oil helps with their metabolism. So it's kind of a well-balanced <coughs> type of thing. All right. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to bring out a couple of animals. Um, we kind of do that not just with the owls because we want to educate people. You're here, you go out and walk, you see things. So we want you to get more involved, more interested. As people see certain animals, what we discovered is people either like certain animals or they absolutely hate them. And there is one animal in particular, a reptile. <laughs> that it appears that people either love them, which I do, or they're like, oh God, one of those. So Bonnie is going to go up and down the aisles and in the front, and she's going to show you root beer. Root beer is a corn that snakes are slimy and wet, and that is so far from the truth. They're silky and they're smooth. The reason you see them on rocks is because they cannot regulate, they cannot make themselves warmer. So they go out, they lay in the sun. When we're handling them, what they'll do is crawl up underneath our shirts because we want to get nice and warm. Root beer is about five burn animals that were donated by people. So we're very appreciative of those things. Like deer hunters are very good to us. Um, just a quick question, how many people think that who even may or may not like hunters? What do you think? You think we like hunters? Nobody wants to say. Well, actually, they're like anything. They're like drivers, school teachers, I'm a nurse, they're like nurses. They're good and bad. And a good hunter loves this. Loves the trees, clear water. Um, good hunting, healthy animals, and so even though we're recipients of hunters, they also don't want animals to have so many that they get sickly and they starve to death. If you've ever seen Oh my gosh. Okay, now we've got the rats. This is Sadie. Um, at Blue Haven, we actually have three educational rats. We have Sadie, we have Butch Cassidy, and the Sundance Kid. Um, <laughs> they have all been rescued. They were all going to be snake food. People call us, we go get them. And it's our way of showing it doesn't matter if it's an eagle or a rat or a field mouse. We take care of everything. In the year 2004, we actually became the designated <laughs> she eagle like to be Howard, she wants We have to done crawl 37 all over eagles, <laughs> and we have four bald eagles on premise right now. Who even is open for tours? Um, it's so super sensitive that like a red-tailed hawk can see a rat from a mile away, no problem. A bald eagle can see a, a full square mile of land from 10,000 feet in the air. So, so almost two miles high, they can see a full mile and see everything that's down in there. If we can see as well as the raptor can see, our eyeball would have to be this big in order to accomplish that. Now, another thing about raptor's eyes that, that we don't have is, is they have two macula in each eye. We have one macula in each eye, and that's where you get depth perception. The raptors have a macula in each eye, so they get that extra depth perception. Now we know this is an owl watch, but we also wanted you to be able to see something to compare it to when all the owls come out. So this is Sammy. Sammy is a red-tailed hawk. Sammy is approximately eight or nine years old. In the state of Illinois, it is illegal to have any educational bird without it having an injury. Is that right, Sammy? Sammy had a broken wing. It did get fixed. She has a pin. However, after everything, she is only able to get off about three feet off the ground. So we're very blessed to be able to have Sammy, who goes around, did she bless the carpet again? <laughs> she did that last moment. <laughs> um, anyway, now one of the things I want you to notice before the owls come out, 
Notice how thin her neck is. Click that in the back of your mind. Notice her face, okay? No facial disc. You will learn about that. Notice how slim she is and how made for speed and strength. Sammy doesn't have to, you know, sneak up on a mouse. She just sees it and goes for it, okay? Take a look at her feet, okay? Something else you will see different about the owls. Now, um, every red tail hawk, give or take, is approximately the same color. But depending on the state they come from, they can vary more red, more brown, that type of thing. They all have a cummerbund that goes across their abdomen area, okay? Um, hawks have excellent sight. And you notice the little brow there? That's her kind of um, inner body, like a sunglass. It's like a visor, okay? What she does as she's soaring and flying, that keeps the sun off of her eye, okay? So she can see and react quickly. Now, Sammy weighs about 3.6 pounds right now, okay? Um, she's one of the heavier, bigger um, hawks around this area, all righty? Now, there are three things that raptors have, and you'll notice this in the owls as are getting them out. They have a beak that's good for ripping, they have talons that I would not but have had go into my hand. And they have extremely good eyesight. Okay, so that differentiates them a lot from the robin. Okay, so I'm going to put Sammy away so that now you can look at the owls, remember what she looked like, and you'll be able to see some of the big differences. Them with me, not as often, but it's her chitter chatter. Okay, now the cool thing that I find interesting since you're um, with the, the owls and then next month will be the eagle release. The next time you're watching a Hollywood movie, you know, leave it to Hollywood and you see an eagle soaring in the air and everything. The noise that the directors have superimposed are red tail hawk. Because eagles really don't have that impressive, what they believe of a noise. And so they take the red tail hawk that has got a screech that would scare the bejeebers out of most people, and they put it on the eagle. Okay, you see we got a variety of owls here. We're gonna talk about each one of these owls here. We're going to start over there with Gloria. Gloria, what do you have there? I have a hard owl. Um, her name is Kenyatta. Kenyatta. <laughs> um, first thing I'm going to talk about is every owl has a facial disc, which brings the sound in closer to them. I have Little Red. Little Red is an Easter screech owl. She is full grown. Uh, there are red ones and there are gray ones. And she's a red one. Does anybody have any idea how much she weighs? Go ahead, take a guess. Let's see what we got. Pound. Half a pound. Right. Pound. Anybody else? Pound? Okay. Pound. Somebody said 45 pounds in the last one. She's been even older. And how much does she weigh? She weighs 3.4 ounces. Oh, wow. Now, Gloria, let's see. Any more guesses? Pounds. Two pounds? Two pounds? Two pounds? Two pounds? Okay, close. Between 2.4 and 2.8 ounces, what she, or pounds, what she weighs. And then this is Jesse. Jesse's our great horned owl. Jesse is our, owl, our first owl that we ever had as an educational bird. She is, um, uh, she is, uh, been with us for what, 14 years, right, Karen? Yeah. And Jesse weighs uh, 3.6 to 3.8 pounds. Now the reason they look heavier than what they really are is they have hollow bones. They have that so they can fly. Uh, all birds of prey and all birds have hollow bones that way. That's why when we get one injured, uh, we take an injured one in with a broken wing or a broken bone. And the, the sooner we get them, the better off we are. We're like, our bones, if we break them and they set wrong, the doctor can re-break them and reset them. But 
on a bird bone, since they're hollow, if you try and re-break that bone, if it doesn't set right, it'll splinter. It's a permanent deal. So they have to they have to be done right the first time. Steve, now, did you want to tell them about the bird? Anybody want to guess what kind of bird she is? What kind of owl? What kind of owl? Yes. Great horned owl. Right. She's a great horned owl. They say it is that these are her horns, but they're not real. Those are just fake ears or tufts on her head. And actually, what they do is they actually, owls have two ears, okay, like us, but the difference is, the difference is she carries one up high on her right side and one down low on her left side. So I can show you, her right ear is up here and her left ear is down here. Now, as he brings them around, if everybody looks up here, you're going to do two things that owls cannot do. I want everybody to look straight ahead and put their hands alongside their face. Can everybody please do that? Okay. Now looking straight ahead and not cheating, wiggle your fingers. Okay. Unless you have a visual impairment, you can see your fingers wiggling because in fact you have peripheral vision. Owls can't do that. Now the second thing you're going to do is you're going to look straight ahead and you're going to, and without moving your head, you're going to look up, down, to the right, and to the left. Okay? Think cold day, it's in winter, you're driving down the highway, it's been very bad hunting, and an owl sees roadkill squirrel in the middle. Okay? So, she's hungry, she goes down for the dinner, you're coming along with the horn, I'm sure it will move any minute. No, it will not. It is in They've been, studies have been done and they can actually hear a mouse six feet under snow. Oh they can actually hear him down. Wow. So if you take your hand, does anybody know what this is called on your ear? No. It is your oracle. You ever see old fashioned movies where they're like, what? What did you say? That brings the sound in. If you look at all three of the owls, every single owl in the world, from the elf owl to the great gray, they all have a facial disc. That acts like your ear. It brings their around behind it and over their left shoulder and then back around the other way, all the way. The reason they do this is because, Jerry? Um, if you guys put your hand back there, you have got seven cervical vertebrae. Remember, you can wiggle your eyes and you have peripheral vision. They have neither of those. So they have 14 so that anything they want to see, they have to turn their head. Now, how many vertebrae do you think does a giraffe have? <laughs> they have seven. Same as us. Isn't that Now, thing about owls, their owls are lazy, lazy hunters. You get your hawks, your hawks will land down at the prairie holes back here for the mouse or whatever, and the prey's out here, the hawk will land in between and say, pound, pound, pull away, you know. Her right wing is intact, her left wing is part so she'll never be able to. How many mice does she eat a day? Linda? I'm sorry. How many mice a day does she eat? Uh, well, uh, on an average. I know for a fact she would eat two. Uh, past that, I don't think we've given her many more than that because she's pretty little. But, and you know, she's, um, she's a little bit uh, anxious in spring. And so you will see that they're all going to be a little bit. Uh, did, did. They're all going to be a little bit too. Before you, she can't come. So, yes, ma'am. How old is that? How old? I'm sorry. How big is the mouth? That How she big is, is the mouth? It's um, they're about. Kenyatta has. A, she's in here. Her eye. Eye. Her right eye. Her right eye has a cataract on it. Again, in the state of Illinois, it is against the law to release a one-eyed bird. Now think about it for a minute. Because they can't wiggle their eyes, because they have no peripheral vision, can you imagine how handicapped they would be if in fact... And she had a little bit of an eye injury when she came in 
and stuff. Um, the, the cataracts are the big things. And just in case, because somebody usually asks, but surely they do cataract surgery, and they do. And we've actually, by one very good doctor, been offered that he would do it. The problem is, because of her age, the vets have suggested that we do not allow that. Because yeah. they have to be under anesthesia for five or ten minutes, and they just don't know how well she would be.